making films, making art, making anything is should be and is a political act. It's a privilege to be making films that can still matter. See the hope in 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 humanity, though, and and uh, I, I long for it to come back. Um, only other very big. Uh, impact that I was trying for is to bring back the politics, the politics that's in the in the book and the politics that is sadly raging in our country today. Literature comes to life with our imagination and films at the right comfort. Welcome back to another session of ODF. Indian parents armed with the right number of villages are always in the search of the suitable book, even in the 21st century. But thanks to Mira Naya, you need to look no further than BBC and now Netflix. Naya, an Indian American filmmaker based in New York City, owns the production company Mirabai Films, which specializes in films for international audiences on Indian society. Among her best known films are Mississippi Masala, Kama Sutra, A Tale of Love, The Namesake, Monsoon Wedding, and Salam Bama. Aviri Bangzai will be talking to her about literature and its suitable adaptation. Hello and welcome to the Odisha Lit Fest with Meera Nair, daughter of Odisha, a very proud, very proud to have been born in Bhuvaneshwar and to have been raised there and talks so beautifully of it. And I hope she'll talk a little about it today. But really, Meera has taught us to be Desi and to be global much before anyone else. I think when she made Salam Bombay, it opened the eyes of India, not just the world, but the eyes of India to what the possibility was. And as she says, look outside your window, the stories are all there. And she's always been one of the greatest storytellers we have. And it's such a proud moment for me to have her with us at the Odisha Lit Fest. Thank you, Meera. And we're here today to discuss A Suitable Boy. Uh, again, a fantastic literary adaptation, which is so, so contemporary. So what do you want to go first with? Uh, well, I just Orisha want to say, or... Orisha, always Orisha, you know, uh, because I, uh, it's really a place in my heart that will never go away. And in fact, something I want to very much make a, a, a memoir or a story or uh, of our growing up. I have to tell you one small correction. I was born in Raurkela. Oh, really? uh, okay, Raurkela, and uh, then moved to uh, Bhubaneswar, um, where I spent the next so, almost 18 years. So, right. um, but uh, it is it is extraordinary. And to this day, some of my closest friends uh, were are you know from Orissa, and I, I'll never forget. So it's a it's a great pleasure to speak to the Orisha Lit Fest. And uh, I'm really just sorry that I'm not there physically myself, as I was just a, a year ago in February, um, you know, going with my brother to, you know, Puri, to Jagannath, to, to uh, Konarak, and, and of course to Udyanmarg, which is number eight by five Udyanmarg, my, the bungalow in which I lived. Uh, right. And a very similar bungalow is in The Suitable Boy, uh, in the bungalow of Mahesh Kapoor. So I, 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 you know, th this was my childhood and so much more. And I really am happy to speak uh, at the Orisha Lit Fest with you, Kaveri. That was a double bonus, as I said. <laughs> Thank you so much, Meera. But really, A Suitable Boy is just so wonderful in how contemporary it all is even now, which is also, I mean, it's tragedy as well. Uh, it's triumph and it's tragedy because all the schisms that you talk about all the deep divisions that are there are still very much alive in fact even in a in an uglier form and yes. the beauty about a suitable boy is really the love of words and the love of all words english urdu it's just so fantastic the celebration of poetry and of uh, prose so talk a little about that and because it's so um, you know you've done three literary adaptations before one almost shantaram so that mm. was like four uh, so how is it to adapt this particular book? Well, you know, Vikram Seth gave us a complete cornucopia with a suitable boy. Uh, he has his finger on the pulse of the absolutely extraordinary idiosyncratic characters that make up our humanity in India, whether they be the anglicized lot who speak in rhyme and dream of Keats, or whether they are... <laughs> well, you know, the, I love uh, that. 
<laughs> and the smitten, smitten kitten about to be bitten. Oh, that's just fantastic. <laughs> that was one of my improvs, I must say. Yeah, but it was it's brilliant. <laughs> yeah, it's just, he has such joy about us as a people, as a very diverse people. And also, of course, his love of words and rhymes and something that he has actually given me as a person uh, in all his prose, uh, right from before the Golden Gate to right through, you know. So, of course, it was the love of the word. But in this case, I must say the adaptation of A Suitable Boy had actually mostly happened by Andrew Davies and by the BBC, um, you know, before I got involved. Uh, but I got involved pretty quickly after that. Um, but it was budget constraints and so many other constraints because, you know, we love our people and we in India, we have, this is a great epic and so on. But in the Western world, in the international world, they still consider it radical to make a, a six part series on just uh, on, a, on a brown epic, you know, on yeah. a on a on a saga that only has south asians in it you know so it's extraordinary that that still exists and that will change but um right now i was still fighting those battles you know um so i came in a little bit later into the already done adaptation that thanks to andrew and vikram uh, I, I, they were very porous to my own suggestions and my big major suggestion really was to restore it back to the language it came from which was like have hindustani where it is spoken have urdu where it is spoken have avdi where it is spoken uh, but that was also you know every syllable was almost measured in how much i could bring back into it um but uh, I was pleased at least that we had that sense of truth in it, you know, um, and, uh, and, and the, and well, and, and then the only other very big uh, impact that I was trying for is to bring back the politics, the politics that's in the, in the book and the politics that is sadly raging in our country today, which the seeds of which are all in Vikram's story uh, in the novel, the, the, creating of the temple in front of the mosques, you know, the Hindu-Muslim divide, despite partition having just happened, these were such old, unbelievably beautiful, loyal friendships between, let's say, the Nawab of Bhetar and Mahesh Kapoor, between their families, between their sons, you know, the absolutely fluid intermingling of culture between, let's say, even Man Kapoor, uh, the minister's son, and the courtesan, Saida Bai, these were, these were alliances that were, yes, frowned upon, but still very much part of daily life, you know. Um, so I wanted very much to reflect in, in the everyday politics of a suitable boy, the, the more than beyond everyday politics of today, you know. Um, because it isn't pride and prejudice it isn't will who will lata marry only lata for me and for a lot of us who made a suitable boy lata for me was the new india haresh khanna is the self-made man who will self-make india who will put shoes on every barefoot free indian you know so it was very important uh, and and it, that that timeliness um what you called modern was was very important in all aspects of the design of the clothing, uh, I mean, even to restore every frame to be being in handloom, which yeah. was the India I grew, yeah. grew up in, yeah. you know, uh, is just such a beautiful thing to do and also a very tough thing to do. <laughs> Occasionally, some, you know, uh, some gundas in Adidas, <laughs> you know, would just <laughs> pop up in the frame <laughs> with their garish blue brands across them. Yeah. And I would say, Aap kahan se aaya? Aap te humare kyun Nikalo. <laughs> So it, it, it's, a, it's a reinvention to go back to the sort of, I, I guess you could call it a purity, you know, to go back to that uh, simplicity and that actual beauty of uh, a life without advertisements, without hoardings, without those colors, a life that was deeply actually Indian uh, without us realizing or loving it as much. The refinement was extraordinary, uh, you know, when it was untarnished by modern life. Absolutely. And, you know, everything that you've done, Meera, is so political, whatever you've made. Look at Mississippi Masala. I mean, you're talking about brown and black relationships. You can't even talk about it now without, you know, some amount of resistance. And it's been so many years. Yeah. Or, you know, the views in uh, Monsoon Wedding. 
these are all deeply personal, but also very, very political uh, movies. How important is it for you to have the politics of what you're doing right? Oh, it's absolutely vital. I, I think that um, making films, making art, making anything is should be and is a political act. Yes. It's all about the point of view one has. You know, yes. you can choose to uh, silence a character, or you can choose to give that character body. I mean, another reference to a suitable boy is Mrs. Mahesh Kapoor, uh, who is like the bedrock of this political family. Right. She's a devout on the surface, like very traditional woman who obeys her husband and all of that. And, you know, uh, does the puja and picks the flowers every morning, but she is the you know, rock of this family that has mostly fought for freedom and was never there. She's the absentee parent for all. And yet, you know, she was not really even given much of a line uh, in all the hours of Suitable Boy before I came in. But I think that these are the women who make our work and family work. And, and also I was very moved by Vikram Sait uh, dedicating the Hindi translation of A Suitable Boy to her. Yes. And I thought that's really something, you know, that, that he regards her like I, I regarded her. And then I found this amazing actress, Geeta Agarwal Sharma, mm -hmm. who plays Mrs. Mahesh Kapoor. And with every frame, we amplified her role. We made her, you know, engage in the same way that she does in the book, but uh, on the frame. So that is political. That is political to, to literally give back the voice, you know, to those that shape our destiny. Mm -hmm. um, and with Mississippi Masala, I'm really happy to tell you that only today uh, that we have, have re-secured all the rights of this 30-year-old film, yeah. which is hardly available anywhere. Uh, and we've re-secured all the rights and we have just uh, sold it into a re-release, oh. literally yesterday night. Um, and it will come back very soon in a beautiful remastered version. And I think of it like, amongst other things, just in terms of the timeliness of Black Lives Matter and Brown Lives Matter, yeah. you know, and, and in the anthem really to Kamala Davis, whom I hope Absolutely. will be making history this week as the Vice President of the United States. I mean, she is like the daughter of Mina and Demetrius in yes. Mississippi Masala. So, uh, so I, uh, you know, I'm very uh, happy that, I guess, you know, Kaveri, it's, it's, a, it's a privilege to be making films that can still matter, you know, decades later, you know, it's, it's really, uh, it's really, it's a be beautiful thing if, if I could bring it back and, and really make the young see it because the young must see it, you know, because it was radical when it came out in 30 yeah. years. And strangely enough, it's still radical. Still radical, which is what yeah. I find amazing. And of course, apart from the luscious Denzel Washington, uh, <laughs> just the shirtless radical. Denzel Washington. <laughs> added bonus. But uh, really, Mira, even a Salaam Bombay for me and for so many others, it really is, you know, what Slumdog Millionaire tried to do. You know, it's just, oh. uh, <laughs> it's just that the world uh, seemed to acknowledge it 20 years later. But, yeah. um, uh, and I think if, if we hadn't had Salaam, we wouldn't have ever come to the point of Slumdog. Yeah. But, you know, really, when you're looking at these stories and when you see how they play out sometimes, is it heartbreaking when uh, it doesn't, although it did so well in 1988, it did so yeah. brilliantly and you were really the toast of uh, Hollywood and you could have done whatever you wanted. Of yeah. course, you did whatever you wanted, but you could have done, you know, the, the yeah. usual Hollywood stuff. But um, sometimes is it heartbreaking when, um, uh, you know, uh, the world doesn't quite recognize it at that moment and then in retrospect, it does? I wouldn't, Yes, uh, you know, not heartbreaking is too intense because you got to protect your heart <laughs> and you got to, I always say you have to have the heart of a poet and the skin of an elephant to do what I do. Uh, but it is, uh, I used to sometimes sink into lament, you know, that, that um, several reasons, you know, one that also being in New York, being in the international sort of sphere, um, it it seemed even for other independent filmmakers like myself, it seemed, you know, uh, easier, much easier for them to cross over into what could be considered a mainstream simply because they uh, used to dream with 
people like in white in white universes where let's say you could or you could cast a Kate Winslet or a Nicole Kidman or a this or a that or a ticket to something that would be then seen more widely. I never thought like that, you know. I never wanted to really think like that. Um, I remember. Uh, I'd made a wonderful, actually wonderful film called Hysterical Blindness, yes. uh, for, 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 which was the white universe. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I made it for Uma Thurman, who's a dear oh, friend, yeah. and, and, and asked me to do it. And kind of unwittingly, uh, I mean, without thinking quite, uh, I mean, I did it and it's a wonderful uh, film, uh, but, but and I was joking, Juliette Lewis is in it, Jenna Rollins and Ben Gazzara, people whom I love, you know, from the Cassavetes films. I love I love actors and I love and I and I've fed on them. But I remember joking with Juliet Lewis, who ran into me ten years later and said, "Era, when are you going to make another film with me?" And I said, <laughs> and I said, as soon as as soon as white people, you know, began begin to be interesting to me, I'll come right back to you, you know. But I definitely felt, you know, right from the beginning, that. Um, well, it's a slogan I say a lot. If we don't tell our own stories, you know, no one else will. And and uh, and if they tell them for us, they'll bugger them up, you know. Mm -hmm. So we, <laughs> we was, and and that's what. So I guess that does define where I go, you know, in my in the gravitation. And sometimes because of the way we were raised on so much literature, on so much Russian books, and and so much English. Uh, you know, vanity fairs and so on. Sometimes when these adaptations of these books come along that really had meant something to me in my childhood, I say yes. And, and I enter that world as fluidly as an Indian world. But it is true that um, I, I'm uh, drawn to our own, uh, you know, to our own dilemmas and to our own struggles and especially to our music and to our, you know, and, and to our poetry, uh, which is limitless in its depth. Uh, and uh, and I feel like I can. I've only just begun in that exploration. And Saidabai really is the epitome of all that. And she, you know, she represents Begamattar, and you know all that uh, she carries with her. Talk a little about the magnificent taboo. This oh is, uh, you know, you worked with her for the second time, and she was so brilliant in the namesake as well. Talk a yes. little about her. Well, Tabu Jan, it's her birthday just a couple of days ago. Happy yeah. birthday to my really piece of my Dilka Tukra. Um, she is um, absolutely extraordinary um, in, in, in that she actually contains a, a, a mystery. She yeah. actually contains a mystery the way that Marlene Dietrich did or the way the greats have you know, where she doesn't reveal everything and she chooses to reveal when she reveals and at the same time uh, has such a accomplished sense of craft that she knows what each jhalak, each glance would do, you know. Um, and, and laced with all that is a comic timing that is absolutely Im unimitable, you know, inimitable. Uh, she's she's um, a great cackler in private. She cackles and yeah. laughs. And we have, a, we have a very girly relationship in private in the sense that we love, you know, design. We love fabric. We love dressing up and we, you know. And raw mango. <laughs> and sometimes raw mango and sometimes just rasta kamal. Sometimes <laughs> badla, badla, ornis. I mean, we just enjoy, um, aesthetics uh, yeah. very very much uh, beautifully but but uh, but but mostly her the depth of her emotion and the lack of showiness you yeah. know there is no falsity in tabu on and off screen and uh, it it and and i really think you know she can pretty much do anything although she was kind of there was no other saida bai i mean she was the epitome of saida bai in terms of the other the whole culture the whole um grace and and the and the wiliness even and the mischief you know uh, all of it you know but um, I, I could work with her every you know again and again and again and each time I'm sure she would reveal something new and and um, I just think she's a real treasure for our country and uh, for our cinema. So, uh, Meera, where are you now at? Uh, I believe that there's uh, an Amrita Shergill um, uh, 
biopic, which is on the way. I hope it is true because I think she's a fantastic character. We've also talked about uh, perhaps making a series on the refugees, on the urban migrants, which is again a fantastic idea. What are you looking at? What has this period been like for you? Just soaking in, of course, uh, the appreciation for Suitable Boy as well. Um, and uh, uh, what are you currently working on? Um, I, I am currently working on two or three things, uh, but the most, the, the thing I'm immediately involved with um, is, is a screenplay that a wonderful French Hungarian writer, Clara Royer, is writing on Amrita Shergill, uh, produced by a young and wonderful, you know, Punjabi producer here in New York, Samudrika Arora, that whom I'm teaming up, who I've teamed up with. Um, yeah, we are deep in it. Uh, I'm surrounded, this, I'm in my study in, New York, and I'm uh, surrounded by this is her uh, her father Umrao Shergill and his photo his photographs and everything that she has done paintings and so on, but Amrita Shergill is is an uh, you know hugely unsung and incredibly iconoclastic greatest modernist Indian painter um, of the 20s 30s and 40s. She died tragically young, and in her her work has you know. Uh, emblazoned literally all my films uh, since Salam Bombay and you know and I, in, I make these lookbooks for my films before we begin and in every one of them you will see Amrita's paintings. Uh, she's taught me about framing, about color, about graphic design. She's um, and the bravery of how she sees our own country you know um, and uh, so and so yeah it's a long time coming and um, yeah, so we are deep in it, and I'm hoping that the COVID situation will allow us to shoot next year, um, and I'm praying it will. Um, that's the first thing that I'm doing, but also we've just putting in all the finishing touches of this big grand 12-year work I've been doing of uh, the Monsoon Wedding stage music. Right, right. Yeah, and now it's all done. It's really in great shape and uh, 21 new songs uh, Vishal Bhardwaj made and such an amazing uh, group of actors and it's really got that um, you know, the heart expanding and squeezing emotion of Monsoon Wedding, the film. Mm -hmm. And it's all live, uh, great, you know, singers, dancers, actors. And finally, uh, we were going to open in London this year, which was shut down by COVID. But now we're going to open more appropriately in India first, uh, oh, in the really? spring. Yes, oh. in the, the spring of 22, 2022. Okay. Uh, 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 that is to say, you know, March uh, of 2022, uh, and then bring it to the Western world and the Eastern world. Uh, but first, uh, in, where it's first at its roots, you know, where it really began, which is uh, India. And uh, so that's the other big project. And then um, in, in, in 2022, we'll, I'll start Jungle Prince of Delhi, which is this big Amazon series. Um, okay on the, the extraordinary true story that was written about in the New York Times by Ellen Barry. Um, this story of um, oh, the yes. Empress of Awadh, the, the Vilayat, who right. declared herself the Empress of, of uh, Awadh and, and, and settled herself in the New Delhi railway station yeah. with her son and her, with her children and her dogs uh, for 10 years until yeah. Indira gave her, uh, Indira Gandhi gave her th this hunting lodge in the middle of yeah. Delhi where she where she lived and died. Um, it's this great sort of operatic almost. Mad, yeah, it's a mad, mad, mad story. Fantastic. Mad story about, you know, post-traumatic disorder, <laughs> diaspora, Brexit. I mean, the whole global upheaval that happened right. Uh, right from the independence struggle before that to now. And uh, so that's the, so my plate is pretty full. Uh, and happy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> streaming services have really changed the game, haven't they? Yes, they for have. For filmmakers all over the world, for actors, yes. filmmakers. Yes, they have. And also they've changed distribution yes. because theatrical distribution hardly exists at the moment, yeah. sadly, for, for at least this year or two. And so therefore streaming is amazing and it's unbelievably democratic because yes. like with The Suitable Boy, I think the, the amount of response I'm getting from all over the world, it's like they probably in one screening uh, more people have seen that than have seen many of my films put together you know just because of the accessibility of them 
uh, so I'm, I'm happy about that. And also that it gives us the opportunity to make long form cinema, to make six hour long films, you know, eight hours, whatever. So I'm, uh, I'm yeah, I'm intrigued by that. Right. What, what upset you most about leaving anything out of a suitable boy? Did you have to leave something out which you really, really wanted to keep? I miss Jawaharlal Nehru's entry, actually. I was just waiting for the actual, you know, you of course have it in footage, documentary yes. footage, but the way it's described in the book is so wonderful. And, you know, it's so Nehru. It yes. just sort of... Um, I, well, I, I'll put him in Amrita Shergill because he was please. a great friend of hers. Oh, he was? <laughs> yeah. Oh, 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 yes. oh yes. Was, it a, was it a lady and winner kind of thing? No, no. I mean, I think uh, many people wanted it to be, but it wasn't. It was a friendship and it was a great admiration of each other. Uh, he loved her art and she, he wanted her to paint his portrait. And she said that she would, uh, he was too beautiful for her to paint him. <laughs> that he, she, she goes, <laughs> she went for much more for uh, people who are much more twisted and, <laughs> and not as, not as, open as he was um but you know i i uh, in suitable boy actually i missed i missed doing more with uh, haresh khanna's life and with bhaskar's life the young boy that uh, because i missed um i miss how haresh um, you know um learns that bhaskar has a mathematical instinct and introduces him to kabir's father professor durani who is a math prof at the university. Yeah. And it is because Haresh takes the little boy to, uh, you know, to, to Professor Durrani that Kabir recognizes this child. Yeah. And then in the riot, when the child is almost dead, yeah. you know, yeah. saves him. Yeah. He knows that this is, uh, you know, Bhaskar from uh, Lata's family. Uh, I, I, loved, I loved Professor Durrani and it was a special uh, love because I wanted to cast my own husband who is a professor oh, and who, yes. who, who, who looks dashing. Perfect. Yeah, <laughs> very dashing. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, I loved that Harish was that person who connected people, you know. Yeah. And uh, I, I love that part, but you know, you have to kill your darlings in six hours, what to do. Uh, there were several things we could have done, but um, it honestly was a question of either this way of suitable boy or no suitable boy. Right. You know, and these are decisions you make for the, I hope, larger good, you know. Than... But I love the Chatterjee's. I mean, they're my all time favorites. I'm so glad there's yeah. so much of it there. But yeah. also because Harish and Lata are actually Vikram Seth's parents, aren't they? Yes, it? exactly. Yeah. yeah, you can see the the love that uh, I, I mean, it makes perfect sense why she chose him and why he chose her. And I think that, that for is, me, knowing Vikram's yeah. parents a little bit as I had done, uh, gave me the strength to see and even the vision, in fact, to 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 think of how to present them, not not just as a settlement of yeah. Lata, yeah. you know, um, but more the, the you know the self made the self made New Indian man, you yes. know, of Harish, you know, uh, and and uh, and also knowing them and seeing the depth of their relationship, you know, over so many years and their kid, their children and their family. Um, there was a great joy and sense actually in in bringing that to life you know because i trusted it i trusted that that decision was superbly the correct one you know yeah. i remember reading reviews uh, of the final season where they said oh she's gone with him oh what a tragedy you know but it's not about that it's it's really yeah. it's so much more but i think and, the west becomes quite focused on the romantic uh, yeah. angle doesn't it that's yeah. uh, that's a very Austrian uh, Austrian thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are used to that. Will she or won't she? And will, right. you know, who will she? You know. Um, but for me, it was just part of the larger fabric, and and also also a, a real charm in it. You know, absolutely a charm in it. That, that, that this, I, I just I, I I and the chemistry between Namit Das, who plays Harish Khanna, yes. and Tanya Maniktala, yes. who plays Lalta is just uh, you know 
you can feel it. It's perceptible. The screen, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I wanted to use that. I, I, you know, the film. I kept thinking of when I was shooting those scenes on the train station and inside the compartment was um, the householder, yeah. the Merchant Ivory film. You know, with Leela, Leela uh, Naidu. Yeah, and and, yeah. and and Shashi. You know, and and I just loved that. You know that the 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 feeling that our life is ahead of us. You know, this is just the beginning. You know, that feeling I wanted to capture in yeah. those scenes. And, and I think that's what one misses in the India of today. You spent so much time here. Uh, you know, while you were shooting this, that joy, that simplicity, that elegance. You know, mm -hmm. somewhere we've lost that. Apart yeah. from of course losing the love for words, I think yeah. language has become so muddied and so dirty and so crude. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, when you look at the India today, sometimes don't you feel, you know, uh, is this the country that I left yeah. so many years ago and I still love so much because you keep coming back and no, you haven't actually, really given up your Indianness at all? No, no. And in fact, I, I have a we have a new home in Nizamuddin, East in oh, Delhi, nice. uh, as of two, three years ago. That's where I've been living. And I've actually spent two three years straight making suitable there and then just came back this year with the lockdown yeah. i just have because we were shooting we were editing in london and by the way so congratulations your son won uh, the election so <laughs> you raised, you raised him right <laughs> we both did yeah. <laughs> then I, we are very happy and we are very uh thank you uh you know he's really the ray of he and his socialist pals who have all won five seats in the assembly yeah. Um, I will I really feel a sense that change is going to come, you know, yeah. because they're going to make it. They are very open about that and they have been voted in. So yeah. it's great. It um, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so you know, very much I'm uh, as soon as the lockdown can make me travel, I'm returning in January to spend the rest of the year there. So I'm very much, especially as I get older, wanting to be home in Delhi. Yeah. Um, my family is there and I don't regard myself. I mean, I still have an I'm still an Indian citizen. It's right. strange during the election that I cannot vote here. Um, but uh, but it's because you know, I've, I've never given up my citizenship in India. And anyway, so I will be returning very soon. And um, and uh, all my films, everything that I'm doing actually uh, is, is based at home. Story, yeah. yeah, yeah. And but I, I do, um, I do, I haven't given up on our amazing, diverse, plural country. You know, I, it is disheartening. It's terribly disheartening sometimes. Uh, but it is the wave of nationalism across the bloody world that is, you know, that is kind of uh, stoking each other almost. So it's no no different here in terms of look at what we're seeing. Uh, so uh, I continue to, you know, see the hope in 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 humanity though, and and uh, I I long for it to come back. Um, yeah, I have you know, yeah, I I need it. It's like it's like oxygen a bit yeah thank you so much yeah. it's always such a pleasure to talk to you and please continue to tell our stories the way you do brilliantly you. colorfully um, <laughs> engagingly and outstandingly thank you so much thank you kaveri thank you odisha i wish to come home soon to Bhubaneswar. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed this session if you would like to know more about olf 2020 or watch other videos, please visit newindianexpress.com and eventexpress.com. If you are more of a social media person, please visit our Facebook, Twitter and YouTube channels. <laughs>